try a couple so we can see if we can identify whether or not a molecule is polar or not. So the first thing you have to do, if you're trying to figure out is it polar, you have to know what the shape is. In order to know the shape, I mean, because if we know the shape, then we know if it's a symmetrical shape or not. And in order to know the shape, we have to know the Lewis dot structure. So here's carbon with four valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one, so I've got eight valence electrons. That symbol carbon is going to go in the center. I'll put a hydrogen on each side. And then I know that I'm going to have to put two electrons in between um, carbon and hydrogen on each area because that's what a bond is. They need to be bonded. So there's my eight. So four things, no lone pairs. The electron shape and the molecular shape are both tetrahedral. I know that tetrahedral is a symmetrical shape. It's this guy. So this symmetrical shape is going to be nonpolar. Nonpolar. Next. So we've got CH2F2. So I have four valence electrons for plus two for the two hydrogens. Each fluorine is going to have seven. So that's going to be 14 more. So I'm going to have 20. 20 electrons, I'll put carbon in the center, and we'll just make this guy symmetrical. I know I have to put two electrons in between each of the atoms to create the bond. So there's two, four, six, eight. Um, hydrogens are good, carbon's good. So 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. That's everything. Sure looks symmetrical, but I know this is tetrahedral. I know tetrahedral is not actually flat. So when you're looking at it like that, it kind of looks symmetrical, but it's not. Ah. Okay, so this guy has the fluorines on one side, the hydrogens on the other. So you're going to have those really electronegative fluorines pulling the electrons towards them, drawing the electrons towards them, making a negative end here and a positive end there. So this guy is polar. It's polar, and if I were to, oops, polar, assign the partial charges, I would say, little delta, partial negative, partial negative, partial positive, partial positive, and then I would have wished that I had just drawn it like this, so I'd have the fluorines on one end, and I could say partial negative, and the hydrogens on the other, partial positive. Okay, that's that guy. Next, we have SF6. Sulfur has six valence electrons. Um, so right away I can see I'm making six bonds. I'm going to break the octet rule. So I'm going to just spread those six valence electrons out to make six bonds. There we go. Six. And now I'll bring fluorine. Every fluorine brings seven valence. There we go. So I can see there are going to be six things attached. No electron pairs. So the name of that shape is octahedral, and they're all the same. So in that case, I know that octahedral is a shape that's symmetrical. Um, all the angles are 90 degrees all the way around. So since it's symmetrical, even though I have polar bonds between the S and the F, sulfur and the fluorine, it's going to be a symmetrical shape. All those poles cancel out, so it's negatively being pulled 90 degrees this way, or actually you could say 180 here and here, 180 between these two, 180 between these two, they all cancel out. So this guy, non-polar, despite all those polar bonds. And then we have SF5 with a negative one. So sulfur has, it's gonna be making five bonds. So right away I know that I'm gonna break the octet rule. Um, sulfur has six valence electrons. So I'm going to spread five out for bonding. One, two, three, four, five. And then it has one more. Hmm, I don't like unpaired electrons. I'll go ahead and guess right now that this negative electron is going to go right there to be the unpaired electron, um, or just, sorry, to be the paired electron that's non-bonding. Then I have five fluorines, each one bringing seven electrons. So in the end, I've drawn all the valence electrons, and I can see I have six things, five are atoms, one is a lone pair. So we're back to the octahedral electron shape. However, this guy is going to be a lone pair instead of an atom. So I've got all these polar bonds. This is symmetrical from here to here. <laughs> That's broken now. 
Um, basically, there's a lone pair. It's not, it's not going to be symmetrical anymore. Um, if this were a lone pair too, it would be symmetrical, but I can see that the top does not look like the bottom. So asymmetrical, it's going to be polar. <laughs>